What's up, guys? Finally, the day has come that the YFZ is finished. And say finished because it's when are you actually ever done building and customizing a full wheeler but for now I'm super happy with this I got a few things that I would like to change but I'm calling it done so the 2022 build I guess you would call that is is finished it's done finally been waiting on parts and stuff and it, it's all here it's really interesting because this is the first time you know, as a YouTuber, as an influencer, whatever you want to call it, that I've worked with some companies. And all of those companies are obviously shown here on the decal set. It was a, a neat experience to be able to work with different companies and try to figure out like how I can promote them and how I can help out with products that I enjoy. And, and I think that's the main thing that people don't always do right. And that's what I wanted to make sure I did right. It's like, all these companies that are on here are stuff that I've used before, bought before, and I trust and rely on. Like, I, I love this stuff. So, in my sponsorship experience, I basically wanted to reach out to these companies first because I didn't want to test things out. It's stuff that that I know is proven. You know what I mean? I've bought. I've bought for several four-wheelers, and I'll continue buying for four-wheelers. Uh, but I wanted to give these companies a chance to let me represent them and uh it worked out great so super thankful for that and uh it's been a great experience it's been great working with everybody all right so the main sponsor for this build was hmf engineering hmf hooked me up with an awesome slip-on performance pipe it was perfect timing that hmf was actually coming out with their new equipment line so they hit me up with a new front bumper. They hit me up with their new rear grab bar and rear plastic mounts. And they hit me up with their new heel guards and pro pegs. What I like about these pro pegs is the peg itself. So it's like two pieces. So this is the one main piece that's all structure. And then this kind of monster peg is bolted on around it and then the heel guards are bolted to it and then to this big this big bracket on the frame what I like about this is all of this is super light like super light but it's pretty I mean it's it's solid super rigid because it's got so many bolting points on the frame and on the pegs <clears throat> however this main frame is what I call it the main peg that thing has got to be 10 pounds. Like, it is, it is so freaking heavy. And I love that. Like, a lot of people, you know, pull these aftermarket parts and they're trying to lose weight on stuff or save weight on the quad and stuff like that. And, like, I'm not a light guy. If I want to save weight on riding, I can lose 40 pounds, you know. But when I buy a product and I grab it and it's just, like, way heavier than I expected, I love that. I absolutely love that because it usually means it's tough. So I have noticed... I'm starting to wear the sheen off, which I think with riding boots, that's just, that's the nature of the beast, I think, when you're really getting rough on stuff. The front bumper, oh, the front bumper. I love the look of the front bumper, especially on the YFC. I don't know, it's just, it just kind of goes together well. But uh, when I first got it, look at that. See this spot right there? That is Sharpie marker covering the powder coat that I rubbed off in the bed of my truck. It's what happens when you get like sponsored parts that you're trying to make one video over the course of like eight months and then, yeah, you're not gonna not ride it, you know what I mean? Um, so I, I scratch stuff up and I'm not very good at taking care of stuff, so. But in case you didn't know, this is the HMF equipment line. This is their logo. Go check them out. I will have link in description of all the parts on this full wheeler and where I got them. So make sure to go hit up HMF, hit up HMF's equipment line and get you some cool gear. 
All right, the second biggest sponsor I've got here is DRW Performance, Weston Rainwater. Thank you so much. So I've been riding since I was four years old and I've been riding hard since I was like 12, nine. I don't know. Started riding a 400 when I was like 14. And ever since then, I've been slamming off of rocks, breaking rotors and then rotor guards and swing arm guards that are all made of aluminum or whatever. You bend them and then I have to try to bend them on the trail back and stuff like that. And Weston has created a UHMW sprocket guard and a UHMW rotor guard. He hooked me up with those for free as well. And this is stuff that I've seen out on the trail. He hooked me up with a case saver and a chain guide. The case saver is what's super awesome. So if you notice, there's like no space between here and the case. So when this chain breaks and tries to wad up in here, it has nowhere to go, literally nowhere to go. So it can't shear these bolts. It can't come up and cut the case. The worry that I've had is maybe that it'll try to flop up and cut some stuff up in here, but whatever it could cut up in here is a lot cheaper than what it could cut up down here. So, and I've had, I've had one chain break on, um, one of these that he's got of mine and it just wadded up right here at the back and it wasn't even stuck that bad. I was able to pull it out. So that, that's pretty nice. Cause sometimes if they wad up in front of the sprocket, it is absolutely ridiculous to try to get that back out. So you'll notice I've got his underbelly skid as well, along with his swing arm guard. And these things are absolutely tough. Seriously tough. Just the last couple videos that I've made at home. Look at this. Look at those gouges. Like, if that was metal or aluminum, that would have been absolutely destroyed. These things take a licking and keep on ticking, guys. I'm serious. I don't want to sound like a salesman because that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just saying he has saved me so much trouble by being able to run this stuff. I work in uh, like the grain industry, um, oil seed extraction and stuff like that. And UHMW is used in like a lot of, a lot of drag conveyors and stuff like that. And just places that it's high wear and like metal would get chewed up and they put UHMW and stuff. And when he said he was making UHMW skid plates and stuff, I was like, holy crap, that's a great idea. But, um, so it seriously saved me a lot of trouble and he's super reasonably priced compared to the other stuff that's out there. So definitely hit up DRW performance Weston. Thank you very much for saving the underside of my bike. Honestly, all right, the next company I've got on here is Spider Graphics. And they weren't necessarily a sponsor, but they worked great with me to get the exact graphics kit that I wanted. I really wanted this thing to maintain kind of the factory plastic style because I love, 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 love the fade to, to burgundy in the back. I love that look. I didn't want to make it too crazy and then just like mix all the colors back and forth. So the way it just fades perfectly back, I love it. Absolutely love it. Couldn't be more ecstatic with it. And you know, like I didn't, I didn't have to tell them to do this cool lines and stuff. Like I'm not that artistic. They just did it. And then they sent me a proof. I approved the proof or said, you know, hey, I need to add a couple more things, blah, blah, blah. Gosh, it just looks good. I mean, it looks good for a Yamaha. Let's be very clear. I'm not team blue. Not yet, maybe. But it looks good for a Yamaha. All right, so now to the stuff that I spent my own money on. Stuff that I thought was awesome. Stuff I wanted to try out. Spent my own money on. There's no sponsorship involved. And I'll give honest opinions on it. I am not sponsored by your mercy. I'm not. I would love it, Robert. I would love it. But um, I saw this stuff come out. I rode it on Pete Hager's quad. And I thought, that's what I need. I'm not an anti-vibe fan. I don't care for fast flex bars. I've ridden them plenty of times. And I just don't, don't like them all that much. Stabilizers, I'm kind of iffy on as well. I don't. They just seem like they're extra work 
when if you condition yourself to be able to take a hit, it's not so bad. However, there are times I have bad wrists. I have super bad wrists from boxing and stuff like that. So there are times when I hit a bump or hit a ditch or hit a log or something that if I'm not prepared just right, that I kind of do this with my wrist and I jam them. This eliminates that. And it's so awesome because it's so much different than anything else. Here it is. This is the Yermosi 720 SBC. SBC is soft bar clamps. And if you want to see a good video of how these work, how they go together, check out Michael Sabo's channel. He does a good job representing Robert. Yeah, so did you see how cool that was? <laughs> um, no, but seriously, like, I'm not a fan of that type of stuff, but this stuff, because normally it makes me feel disconnected, right? Like, I'm a super sensory type guy, so I want to feel things. I want to feel connected to the vehicle or the quad, and uh, some of that stuff makes me feel disconnected, and this does not at all. Like, normal riding conditions, I don't feel like... It's even there. I don't even know that it's there. And then there's a few moments when I hit something just awful that I go, oh my gosh, that just saved my wrist, you know? And knowing that has given me a lot more confidence in whoop sections and stuff like that. Just knowing that if I go into this and I hurt my wrist in the fourth whoop of 20, I'm not going to wreck because I can't hold on to it anymore because I broke my wrist. Like, it seriously feels good. So, continuing with the theme, we have your Mosi's throttle. And this thing's pretty freaking sweet. The pull is like super easy, super smooth. It's another piece that was on Pete's quad, something that I wouldn't have thought to buy um, originally. But then after using it and just having like the changeability of the throttle piece, next level, next level, man. I love it. It's the small stuff that, that really adds up. Like uh, for instance, I know, I know some people don't like these ASV levers. I've never really had a problem with them. Except for that these are like two different color reds, and they're not supposed to be, but whatever. It's chaos, right? Whatever. Um, but these are shorty levers, and it is really kind of nice to just be able to grab this with a few fingers. Let's see if I can do it. Grab it with one finger, two fingers, maybe just two like that. However, you get grab a hold of it. It's just kind of nice to have shorty levers. Something uh, that, again, like I, I don't know that I ever really would have got it, but I was like, this is like a new four-wheeler. Everything is different about it. Let's try some new stuff. So uh, tried it out. Now I like it. It's, it's definitely something I want to go with in the future. Um, also another new thing, ODI grips. So a lot of people don't, there, there's mixed reviews on the ODI grips, and that's because everybody gets the Rogue ODI grips. These are half waffle. So the Rogue is legit an eighth inch, a sixteenth to an eighth inch thicker of a grip. So you feel your grip strength is a lot weaker by grabbing onto it. So these are half waffle and they feel like OEM. It's a soft compound. I don't know if you can see the, let's get it to focus. Focus, there we go. You can see it move, look at that. They'll probably wear out quicker but because they're bolt-on grips, slide them off, put a new one on, bolt it on. As far as the motor, I know people are gonna ask about that. That was stupid, I almost forgot. So the motor, um, stock motor. We did do the 09 to 2010 uh, clutch upgrade, the basket upgrade, did do that. Then we got the HMF exhaust. We're running stock intake with um, no lid. Um, and a Vortex tuner. We went, we went to Jay at Illinois Power Sports to install the Vortex and dyno tune the Vortex. Um, so before the Vortex and the exhaust and everything, this made uh, roughly 40 horsepower. And then um, after the exhaust and the tuner, we're making almost 44, so nothing crazy. We're still running on 93, um, but 
it's way smoother power now. The Vortex, from my understanding, the Vortex is the only way to get rid of all the low end bog, all the popping and breaking up on acceleration and deceleration. And that's because other systems are piggybacking off of the factory ECU, where the Vortex tuner is a completely new ECU. It's a completely new ECU, and it's programmable by people who have the software. They have settings that you can do with screwdrivers, but to truly get the ratio right all the way across the RPM range, you have to go to the dyno shop. So it is a pretty big investment, um, but I'm telling you, this quad is a totally different beast with a Vortex tuner and exhaust, and it, and it being dyno tuned. That is the biggest thing. It's being dyno tuned at a seriously totally different machine. Because All right, guys, I've been all over the place with this four-wheeler, this build. Gosh, but it is beautiful. And if you don't think so, well, I'm sorry. It is. You won't change my mind, it's okay. All right guys, so this video has been kind of all over the place and I apologize for that. This is like not what I normally do. I I belong behind the camera, riding the quad. So did this video for you guys though, so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. And if you guys like this kind of stuff, I'm, I'm open to trying more of it. But for now, I'm ready to go ride. See ya.